Hi, this is Rich Weatherall, Program Manager for Climate Watch, with a demonstration showing you how you can download your own data from Climate Watch and display it using the spatial tools in the Atlas of Living Australia. So there's a few things you need to do this. Uh, first, you'll need your web browser on the Climate Watch website. You will also need to be visiting the Atlas of Living Australia website and go to the Mapping and Analysis section, which is the spatial portal. And lastly, you will need a spreadsheet program like Excel or Numbers or maybe the Google Docs option. Now, one important thing, when it comes to importing the data on the spatial portal, uh, I'll just show you what format you need before we start to get our data out of Climate Watch. Highlights quite clearly here that we need the fields organized with a name and then the longitude followed by the latitude in the second column. So we'll go to the Climate Watch site and I'm already logged in. Go to my account and you can see this button here, download sightings. Tap that one and you're presented with a range of options. What we have done with Climate Watch is organized species into different species groups that share similar uh, behaviors, so phenophases or behaviors that uh, can be recorded. For example, flowering plants, um, some have open seed pods, but some don't. And similarly with birds, we've got some birds that swoop while there are some birds that don't swoop. And I haven't recorded on every single species, so I've only got a limited range of species groups here. But today for this example, I will have a look at some of my bird data. So tap download and a .csv file will appear on your computer. So this has got a range of data. Now I'm just going to put uh, recordings for one species onto a map to display in the spatial portal. So if the first thing I need to do is highlight all the columns, go to the data option in Excel, and what I'm gonna do is sort this data. So the data's got headers, I can pick which column to sort by. I will sort by scientific name. You can see now that the data is sorted. For this demonstration, I'm going to look at Welcome Solos, which is the Hirundo Nexoma. So I will delete all of the other rows and just keep that one. A few more rows to delete. There we are, just the welcome follow. Now I don't actually need all of the columns. I'll get rid of these ones. But remember back to the spatial portal, we needed longitude first and then latitude second. So the easiest way to do this is select that column, right click cut, and then right click on the next one and insert cut cells. So it switches the two around and I can now save this as a separate file. So later on I can come back and open up the original download file and split out data from the other species I've recorded on. I will call this one Rich W Welcome Swallow and keep it as a CSV file because that's the format you need for the spatial portal. So the file is ready to go. You can now go to the spatial portal and choose import points. And we'll call this a label that's appropriate and it's my climate watch data. Find the file, there we are, open, <clears throat> and we'll use the current extent for the world just in case we've got any bizarre sightings outside of Australia, and click next. And you can see I've got data in Perth and in Brisbane. So we will zoom in and have a look at the data I've got in Brisbane. And as we get closer, 
start to see where that data can be found. There's two key spots in the Brisbane Botanic Gardens. So I can go this level with the map, but I can also change some of the map options. So I can go for a satellite layer or a minimal layer. And if I was looking at data from across the country, you can even go for outline, but that's a little too limited for this example. So I think for today, I'll just go with the satellite. If I go back to my set of data, I can change the opacity. So if there's any ability to see through the dots, you can also change the size of the dots. And what I'm also going to do is add in other historic data for the Welcome Swallow that can be found in the Atlas of Living Australia and compare what my sightings show relative to what else has been found. So here we go to Add to Map and we pick Species. And we can search for the species. It's quite simple. Start to type in the name and it'll pick the Welcome Swallow. We go Next. Again, we'll go for the, uh, the same extent across the world. This data set's a little bit bigger than mine, so it'll take a little while to process. And at the moment, it's showing it in a format of a density grid, but we can switch to points and can also change the size of those points. And you can see that data has been recorded in some nearby locations. So it's very likely that my data is valid. One of the things we can do now with this is export a map. So I'll create a .jpg file and we'll leave the caption of the date. Oh, I might change it actually to welcome swallow data. And then hit download and an image will be produced which can be used in a report or on a web article. And we have the image there showing my data that's been displayed. And if you want to go through and add more layers, essentially follow through the same process and you can add multiple layers with multiple different species in the one map.